Today we're visiting Hot Springs, Arkansas. We'll see the historic bathhouses, we'll get a bird's eye view from Mountain Tower, and enjoy an India Pale Ale at the Superior Bathhouse Brewery. Then we'll continue driving to the west, all the way to the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. After some bumpy roads in western Tennessee, we are now crossing the Mississippi River into Arkansas, the natural state. Let's stop by the Welcome Center and see if everything survived our first bumpy road of the trip. Here goes nothing. I guess we did a better job securing this stuff than I thought. Kudos to us. Yep, everything looks good. It is going to be breakfast at the rest area. And some coffee. Now how beautiful is that? Cheers! The drive through Arkansas on I-40 is mostly uneventful, except for some very large oversized loads. Also, the inevitable traffic jam, caused by road construction. Eventually, we are greeted by the Little Rock skyline. Here we are, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Before we continue, this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, our longtime sponsor. And what it does, you know, it is a virtual private network. It creates a private secure connection between your devices and the internet. And this is particularly important if you're going to connect to a potentially insecure Wi-Fi, like a hotel, campground, restaurant. This will prevent a bad actor from eavesdropping on that connection and potentially stealing your passwords, your identity. And it's very simple. It's just an app on your phone or your computer or your streaming device. Let's go into Surfshark and quick connect and within seconds you are private you are secure you're 100% sure that that connection is for your eyes only now it has other features and my favorite feature is the fact that you can transport yourself around the world virtually for example let's, let's say and I always uh, do this example because this is the one that I like let's say I want to watch Star Trek for example if I, if I go to Star Trek in the US what do I get a documentary about Spock and then what Starship Troopers really no let's I, I want to watch Star Trek so let's get out of Netflix and let's connect to a place where we're going very soon Canada Canadians can watch Star Trek apparently so now we go back to Netflix and uh, and let's search for Star Trek. And what do you know? We have the original Picard, Voyager, all the Star Treks are here. So that's one of my favorite features. Of course, it has other features. It has a clean web feature that will get rid of unwanted ads or malware. It has a true incognito search for your eyes only. And I have a special offer for you guys. If you go to surfshark.deals slash myrv and you enter promo code myrv at checkout, you'll get an exclusive deal and three months for free. All right, well, our time here is kind of limited, so let's get into town. I think Google Maps is taking us through one of those shortcuts that only saves you like 30 seconds, but it is cool to see what the town looks like beyond the touristy area. I 
I think we're approaching the main touristy area, which happens to be a national park. Here on the right, they have some fountains where you can taste the water. It seems several people are taking advantage of that. We're going to park at the free parking garage on Exchange Street. Well, here we are, Hot Springs. This is what is known as Bathhouse Row, eight remaining bathhouses built between 1892 and 1923, and basically the main area to visit in Hot Springs. These are the National Park Headquarters, and uh, this is an unusual national park. It's all about the architecture and the history and the natural curiosities of this area. Here we have the fountains I mentioned, where you can taste or at least feel the heat and smell of the water. Yeah, it is. It is pretty hot. Here we've got some magnolias, the staple of the south. Okay, we have the map. Here we are here. What we're gonna do? We're gonna go down the street in front of all the bathhouses, and then we'll return on the promenade. On the promenade. Or maybe we should do the promenade first. All right, we can't make up our minds. We're gonna do the street first and then the promenade. <laughs> Lamar seems to be a gift shop nowadays. And Ozark is an art gallery. Guapa is one of two that still works as a spa. The other one is Buckstaff, which is undergoing renovations. Next is Fordyce Bathhouse, which is the National Park Visitor Center and the museum. Such a lavishly decorated building. This is the Fordyce. Let's check out the museum. Of course, there would have to be a raised relief map about the geology of the area. And here we have some history. Here we have some artifacts, relics from each of the different bathhouses. This is the men's bath hall, with its ceramic fountain and stained glass ceiling. In its heyday, Fordyce bathhouse was considered to be the best. They had something called electrohydric bath. I don't know about that. I don't think electricity and water should necessarily mix, but hey. Nice stained glass window in the steam room. It's like a torture machine, if you ask me. Two more steam rooms. Now for the ladies' area. This would be the cooling room, where the ladies would relax as 
their bodies returned to normal temperature. Let's check out the second floor. Now we are in the men's dressing room. Outside, that would be the men's court. Let's step into the men's massage rooms. This would be massage equipment, right? Very interesting looking devices. Third floor, they're about to kick us out of here, by the way. They're closing in about 15 minutes. Yes, please. Yeah, we arrived a little too late, but I'm glad we still get to see the museum. Oh, look at this. This would have been the third floor party room. Very nice, very luxurious. I can only imagine what it would have been like at the time. This would have been the ladies parlor. Hmm, electro massage. Interesting. I would be afraid to get electrocuted. They had private rooms, of course. And this would have been the gymnasium. This was very, very interesting, if unfortunately a little rushed. And now for the basement. That's the actual hot spring down there. This would have been the original mechanism for the elevator. Going up. It's a very cool museum. Now let's continue. You know, roam in the streets of, uh, of Hot Springs, Arkansas. One final look from the outside at this magnificent building we just toured. And as we zoom in through the window, we can see the stained glass ceiling. Probably the party room. Well, let's continue. Is this a spring? Nope. There's a place back here where you can see one of the natural hot springs. That up there, that must be the Grand Promenade. I think we have a, a water leak. What is it? You can feel the heat. It. 
Let's get back to the main drag. Maurice Bathhouse. Don't know what that is nowadays. And the hill seems to be a hotel. And the superior is a brewery. I'll let you guess where we're going next. According to what I heard, they brew their beers using water from the springs. We're having a pretzel, fried sweet plantains, a cheesesteak sandwich, and cauliflower. Let's check out the beer park, their outdoor seating area. Actually, this outside area, if it wasn't so hot, it's very nice. was once the site of the state capital of Arkansas and that would be the famous Arlington Hotel which is said to be haunted and here we have another spring and now we're gonna take this promenade all the way back Rooftop bar. We're back by the rear of Fordyce Bathhouse. The tall building used to be the Army and Navy General Hospital. And we are back where we started. <laughs> Since this is a national park and I'm not allowed to fly the drone, let's see all this from a higher perspective. This is called Mountain Tower and it is supposed to offer commanding views of the area. For Hot Springs National Park, sometimes it's hard to tell. The park includes large areas for the park. Oh, yeah. Commanding views. That was a fun afternoon in Hot Springs. Tomorrow, we continue driving to the west.
Well, this place claims to have the best breakfast in all of Hot Springs, so let's check it out. It's always nice to have a campground with a restaurant hmm. and art. Just in case you get lost. Mm. I can already smell it. We decided to go for the three meat breakfast burrito. Mmm, yum. Well, that was really good. Very filling. Now, the road beckons once again. Just driving straight west. This was a nice stop, a nice KOA. Now, Oklahoma City. Western Arkansas, more mountainous than you would think, right? I believe these are called the Washita Mountains. Are those chickens I see in front of us? They certainly are. Small sign on the right and the crease on the pavement signal we are now in Oklahoma. Oh well, yeah, we stopped at this abandoned shopping mall just to take a break go to the bathroom and I had forgotten to schedule my live stream so I did that too Must apologize for the dirty lens. I think we killed more than a few bugs today. Let's take a break at this abandoned car dealership. Whew. A little over an hour to go, but coffee at an abandoned dealership on the road. I just love RV life. Cheers. We managed to stay most of the day off the interstate, but now for the final stretch, we're getting into I-40 West to Oklahoma City. Does that dead bug in the middle of the screen bother you too? And we are arriving at our overnight spot for the night. I was gonna stay at the KUA, but I've always wanted to stay at one of these Love's RV stops. After making a quick reservation using the app, they send you a text with the gate code. And that's all there is to it. Well, almost. I've been meaning to stay at one of these uh, Love's uh, truck stops for, for a while now. And this one is actually quite nice. It feels more like an RV park. The ones that we've seen in the past are kind of just glorified parking lots with hookups. 
But this one looks brand new. I mean, I haven't hooked up the water or the sewer yet. All we really need right now is, uh, is electric belt. And for the price, it's, I mean, it's, it's Friday, uh, Memorial Day weekend. So everything is going to be full. And for the price, you know, 37 and change. Uh, I don't think it's bad. And we are like, what? 10 minutes, 20 minutes away from from Oklahoma City, which, you know, city RV parks are usually more expensive, so. Yeah, and I thought there was gonna be like a kiosk where you, uh, you know, check in or reserve, but they, they just, you know, you reserve it on the app, and then they send you the, the code for the gate, and that's it. It's automated. All right, let's get something to eat, and, uh, and then we have a live stream. Well, I always went in and complained because we didn't have power, and it turns out, that uh, once you get that confirmation email you have to physically you know check in on the app and then automatically you know it's all computerized automatically they turn on your pedestal so hey the more you know well this was way too convenient even though i'm more of a whopper kind of guy we had to do it i'm tired i don't feel like cooking tonight now wouldn't it be more appropriate to call this a half pounder instead of a double quarter pounder I'm just saying. Anyway, good ap bon appetit. We're hungry, we're tired, and uh, have to be live in less than an hour. Coming to you live from more or less the halfway point across the continent. Hello, everybody, and uh, happy Friday. Good morning. Some call it the most important meal of the day. Did I mention, with the Loves app, we also get 10 cents per gallon off? I've been a pilot flying J guy for a while, but I think Loves is winning me over. I-40 to Amarillo may be the most efficient route, but in this case we want to see the Oklahoma Panhandle, so we're going to get off the interstate and take US 281 West to US 270, which also happens to be historic Route 66 in these parts. That's pretty cool. Here in Geary, we join US 270 West. Some of it is as flat as a pancake. Sometimes we encounter the occasional rolling hills with windmills, middle of nowhere mansions, and ever so subtly it's starting to look a little more arid. We're approaching an area known as the underpopulated belt. Oh, now you know why I love having a small trailer. Here we're going to take US 412 West, which goes along the narrow Oklahoma Panhandle. The Panhandle is entirely in this area, this stripe of land which goes from the Canadian border down to the Rio Grande, roughly 12% of the United States, where only 1% of the population lives. It is called, as I mentioned, the uninhabited belt, and it certainly feels that way. There are certainly more cows than people. We went from lots of wind generators to lots of oil and natural gas derricks. The area is certainly rich in renewable and non-renewable natural resources and grass-fed beef.
and we are in Gaimon. Here they have an RV park located in an old driving theater. And I believe they still play movies every night. I think that's it. That's pretty cool, although not everybody can see the screen. Maybe we'll stay there next time, but as you probably know, the purpose of this trip is Alaska, so we won't linger for too long anywhere in particular. It is certainly looking more and more remote and uninhabited. The few dwellings we see on the side of the road seem to be abandoned. It is that dry step in the rain shadow of the Rocky Mountains, which we will approach soon. Very excited about that, actually. Boise City is probably the last town of any size we'll encounter before we get to our destination for today. I think I see a mountain in the distance. Or is it a mirage? Nope, that's no mirage. I doubt it is part of the Rockies, but with every mile we are getting closer. For example, we are now in New Mexico, the land of enchantment. Here we are about to encounter a geographical curiosity, and I was hoping there would be like a place to stop, but I'll be brief. This road is deserted anyway. Well, we pulled off here on the side of the road because this is supposed to be somewhere here, the northwest corner of Texas. Let's see if we can find a marker. Otherwise, we'll continue. Here it is. So we are technically in Texas right now. Should I add it to my map? Uh, maybe not. What's going on here? Are they giving away gas? Tell you what, I still have over a quarter tank and 10 gallons in the trunk, so I guess we're gonna go somewhere else. Will we be able to make it to the next town in one of the most remote areas of the country while running on fumes? Well, you'll find out on the next episode, when we will hopefully finally reach the Rocky Mountains. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding in my